At this time of year, polar bears on average succeed only once in 20 hunts. If the hunter is skinny, like this one, that may not be often enough. All she can do is keep trying. To prevent her scent betraying her, she makes a wide sweep to get downwind of the seal. Getting close. She's now right behind the seal. Incredibly, she caught the seal underwater. It's only small, but even so, its blubber alone will contain a hundred thousand calories, enough to sustain this bear for a week. And in that time, she might even catch another. But this can't go on forever. As summer continues, temperatures are rising. Each hunt requires more energy, draining the bears of their reserves. Northern Australia has the highest tides in the tropics, which expose vast areas of shoreline. And here lives a truly extraordinary species of octopus. Octopuses are marine animals. They live and breathe underwater. At low tide, most octopuses would be imprisoned in their rocky pools. But this is no ordinary octopus.
It's the only one specially adapted to walk on land. It pulls itself along using the hundreds of tiny suckers that line its arms. Hunting for crabs, it walks from pool to pool. Apart from a rather startled fish, this one is empty. So, the octopus moves on. A rock pool may seem like a safe refuge. But the octopus's suckers enable it to move just as stealthily in water as out of it. Nowhere is safe when this octopus is around. Their cover blown. Escape seems impossible. But these particular fish have a unique ability. flying fish. With an extra thrust from their tails, the flying fish get airborne once more. With a good wind, they can glide for hundreds of meters. But this is just what the frigate birds have been waiting for. When frigates join the hunt, the flying fish are literally caught between the devil and the deep blue sea. If the flying fish get too much lift, they become easy prey for the frigates. If they dive to evade attack from above, 
they could fall into the mouths of the Dorado. will normally avoid hunting in such heat. But they're also opportunists. Lions will need to bring him down quickly before they overheat. Away from the herd, a bull is a formidable opponent. He could gore and kill a lion. to overheating, they finally succeed in bringing him to the ground. But the massive bull is not giving up. Against the odds and the full weight of the lions, he regains his feet. And it is now that the tables turn. The lions are exhausted. After a 20 minute struggle, only the bull has the energy to finish the fight. In such exposed and extreme conditions, the challenge for predators and their prey is at its most intense. Food is so hard to find this far north that a wolf pack must search hundreds of square kilometers if it's to be successful. And success means raising the next generation. To do that here, the wolves must work together. So the young are raised not only by their parents, but by their aunts and uncles as well.
Together, they try to ensure that each pup reaches near adult size before the snow returns. A growing pup needs more than just a few leverets. The wolves need bigger prey, and to catch that, they must hunt as a pack. Adult hares may be easy to spot, but they're far from easy to catch. They run at 60 kilometers an hour. To catch one, the wolves work as a team. One of them gets close enough to bite the hare's tail. But a hare can change direction in an instant. If it can continue to sidestep and jink, it may ultimately outlast them. Finally, it gets away. For the next hare, the whole pack gives chase. Now, numbers count. The lead wolves keep up the pace. Others run on either side, so the hare can't change direction. A tiny meal for the whole pack. <laughs> 